This is Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the first-person puzzle-slash-physics-based game Portal. If not, you basically control a character that can create these, well, portals and use them to hop from one area of the environment to another. Well, that is basically what we are going to create today. We won't be touching much physics, but with a few simple scripts, we will put into place the teleporting system. Our little character will be able to move around the scene, set up portals and smoothly hop from one portal to another. Now, as you can see, the project is set up from a top-down 2D view, but the teleporting techniques showcased in this video can be applied to all kinds of perspectives and dimensions. With all of that said, let's begin. So I have a simple Unity scene set up with a moving player character. If you're not sure how to get a 2D character moving in this fashion, definitely check out my easy to follow tutorial on the topic. Other than that, I have these two portals, one orange and one blue, both of which have absolutely nothing attached to them except for a sprite renderer. First things first, we are going to give our player the power to manipulate the position of the portals. Basically, when the player left clicks somewhere with his mouse, the blue portal will hop to the cursor's current position, and same thing for the orange portal, except we will use the right mouse button. To do so, I'm going to create a new c -sharp script and call it Move Portal, and then open it up inside of my scripting editor. First of all, I'll create a private vector2 variable called target. We will set this equal to our cursor's current position whenever we click. I'll then create another private variable, this one of type transform called blue portal. In my start function, I'll set this blue portal transform variable to the position of whatever object has a tag named blue portal. Of course, we will set up this tag in just a moment. With that done, I'll make an update function and inside it create an if statement. Here we will check when the player hits the left mouse button. So input.getMouseButton down and type in zero inside the parentheses for left. If you'd rather the player hits the right mouse button to manipulate the blue portal, type in one and for the middle mouse button, type in two. All right, awesome. Inside this if statement, I will now set the target vector2 variable we created earlier to the mouse cursor's current position. Doing so is super easy. Just type in camera.main.screen to world point and inside the parentheses type input.mouse position. Now this target variable is equal to the position of our cursor when we click the left mouse button. Lastly, I'll set the blue portal's position equal to a new vector2, and inside the parentheses, I'll want my blue portal to move to the target's x and y coordinates. In other words, the cursor's position. So obviously, since I am using the left mouse button to manipulate the blue portal, I'll use the right mouse button for the orange portal. So I'll make another private transform variable called orange portal, set its position equal to the object that has an orange portal tag, and when I hit the right mouse button, instead of moving the blue portal, I'll move the orange one. So let's recap. We grab our mouse's position and get our blue or orange portal to move to that position, depending on whether we've clicked on the left or right mouse button. It's as simple as that. Before pressing play inside of Unity, I'll make sure my blue portal has a blue portal tag. Now, I already have a tag called blue portal set up, but if you don't, just go over to add tag and type in blue portal. And of course, also add an orange portal tag to the orange portal. 
I'll then drag and drop my move portal script onto the player and hit play. And you'll see that I can now move my portals to wherever I click. Super. But of course, this is only half of the process. We must now get our player hopping from one portal to another. So I'll create another script, name it, you guessed it, portal and open it up. I'll start by making one private transform variable called destination. We will use the destination variable to dictate where exactly our player must move once he's collided with a portal, be it orange or blue. If this doesn't make any sense, stick with me and everything will soon be very clear. I'm going to create a last variable, this one public of type bool, called it's orange. Since we will be using this same script for both portals, we need a way to differentiate the two. That's why I'm creating this bool variable. So logically, the blue portal will have this bool set to false, and the orange portal will have this is orange bool set to true. Before setting the value for the destination transform variable, I'll check with an if statement whether this portal is orange or not. If it isn't, then we want our destination to be the orange portal, so I'll set my destination's position equal to the position of the object that has an orange portal tag. And of course, if the portal is in fact orange, then logically we want our destination to be the blue portal. But all of this will still not get our player moving from one portal to another. We now must detect when the player collides with a portal. So I'll type void on trigger enter 2D and inside of the parentheses type collider 2D other. Make sure to spell everything exactly as I have since this is a built-in Unity function and a single misplaced letter will turn the function into a useless block of code. Inside this onTriggerEnter2D function, I'll set the position of whatever we've collided with to a new vector2 that has the portal variable we set up earlier's x and y coordinates. And that is about it. So quick recap. Basically this block of code detects when our player has collided with the portal and when it has, it moves the player to the opposite portal. Before pressing play, I'll add a 2D circle collider to my orange portal that I'll set to trigger, as well as a 2D rigid body that I'll set to kinematic, since I don't want my portal being affected by gravity or external forces. We must add these components to make sure our portal detects when the player collides with it. I'll also add the same components to my blue portal. Of course, don't forget to add the portal script to both portals and set the isOrangeBool to true on the orange portal. Lastly, I'll make sure my player also has a collider and rigid body. My character already does. Again, all this was set up in the how to make a 2D character controller tutorial. Alright, we are now ready to test our game, and you will notice that we are met with a nasty looking glitch. But of course, this is nothing to worry about. The reason this is happening, and I'm sure you've guessed it, is because our player is immediately colliding with the portal as soon as he jumped to its position. Now there are a bunch of ways to fix this. What I'll do is check whether the player is colliding with the portal from a certain distance away and not when he is completely on top of it. This way I'll know for sure that he is moving into the portal from the outside and not from the inside. So back inside of MonoDevelop, I'll make an if statement and check the distance between the player and the portal using vector2.distance. If the distance between the two is, say, greater than 0.3, then I know the player is moving into it from the outside, and only then will this teleporting code run. Of course, this 0.3f value may need to be tweaked depending on the scale of your player and portal. What you should do is create a public float variable called distance that I'll set to 0.3 and replace that hard-coded value with distance. Now hitting play, 
you'll see that our game works. Fantastic. And that concludes this tutorial. Now, you may have noticed that the player can not only use these portals to move himself about the scene, but also befuddle enemies and obstacles. So I hope you have fun playing around with this concept. I sure had a great time making this video. For those of you wondering why I've not made a Fire of Belief devlog video, I'm afraid the previous week was simply packed with dreadfully boring school. As a result, I wasn't able to make enough significant progress to make a full video. But of course, you can expect one to come out this weekend. Of course, thanks so much for watching the video. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons to join the Blackthorn Prod family and not miss any new game creation content. And with that, I'll see you very soon. Cheers!